everybody. It's uh, 21 News. Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm here. This is the Valley's most in-depth and, dare I say, accurate weather forecast video. We have our hits and misses, but uh, no big uh, forecast busts in the recent past. We're going to talk about the uh, winter forecast at the end of this month, and I, I suspect it's going to not be one for the uh, Hall of Fame, <laughs> given how warm it has been this winter, but we'll get to that in a few weeks. In the meantime... Uh, our forecast is a changeable one for the next couple of days. Today was just a typical early February day. How many times have we said that recently, that we had a seasonable day? But today's high temperatures were right about where they should be at this time of the year. That means the mid-30s. It uh, was pretty nice outside this afternoon. A little bit breezy, but the sun was shining. And again, temperatures did crack the freezing mark. Good-looking midday and afternoon today with bright blue skies for several hours. And then a veil of high clouds filtered in from time to time during the mid and late afternoon. Those clouds thinned out a little after sunset, and then uh, clouds will increase again later on tonight. Here comes our Arctic cold front. Uh, it is uh, plowing through the U.S.-Canadian border right now. Hopefully it's clearing customs. And it's bringing uh, snow showers to Detroit and Windsor and heading over towards Toronto, Niagara Falls. Buffalo and Erie are up next, and then we'll get in on some snow showers later on this evening. And I do mean this is an Arctic cold front. Check out the wind chills in the upper Midwest this evening. 30 below in International Falls. And believe it or not, this is only a taste of what's coming to the northeastern U.S. These wind chills aren't bad compared to what they'll have tomorrow night and Saturday morning in New England with maybe some parts of Maine getting down to 50 or 60 below for the wind chill. And so for good reason, there's actually a whole bunch of real estate covered by wind chill advisories and wind chill warnings. Now, you know, you're pretty hardy if you live near the U.S.-Canadian border, but even by upper Midwest and northern New England standards, this is pretty cold stuff. So wind chill warnings extend all the way down into the Hudson Valley in New York and across the eastern Finger Lakes as well. Uh, no watches, warnings, or advisories for our viewing area. We do have a wind chill advisory out for parts of northwestern PA. So later on this evening, our cold front arrives. There's going to be a couple hours where there can be some snow showers pushing through it, maybe enough to dust the ground in some spots and cause a few slick surfaces, but uh, accumulations should be pretty minor with the arrival of our front. I think we'll get into a lull for a lot of the overnight hours before the lake effect machine starts taking over as we head towards tomorrow. There's probably going to be a couple of wiggly bands coming off of Lake Huron, picking up some moisture off of Lake Erie, and giving us at least some flurries uh, during the first half of Friday, and maybe even a substantial snow shower here and there. Temperatures are going to be the big story, though. The snow is not going to be a big story on Friday in most spots, at least in our viewing area. But the temperatures going nowhere. Mid-teens at best, but wind chills be mostly between 0 and 5 below 0 on our Friday. You know, we, we, we've had a lot worse in the wintertime. We'll have a lot worse again. But this is some of the coldest weather we've had since that cold snap right around Christmas. We're not expecting wind chills to be on par with what we had uh, on Christmas Eve and into Christmas Day, but it's still going to be pretty darn cold. Accumulations will be most uh, noteworthy in the primary snow belts. Nothing crazy here, but someone's going to get four or five inches probably from extreme eastern Ashtabula County across into parts of uh, Crawford and Erie Counties, PA, up into southwestern New York. In our television viewing area, most of uh, our viewing area gets an inch or less. Most of it's just a candy coating at worst. Um, could someone get up to a couple of inches if you get uh, in on some of the lake effect that has a Lake Huron connection. Yes, that's probably most likely in places like Greenville, uh, New Lebanon, Sandy Lake, heading down towards Fredonia, Mercer, maybe Grove City. Those are the places that have the best chance of maybe seeing somewhat more than an inch worth of snow with those lake effect streamers. But eventually the lake effect machine will shut down towards the end of the day tomorrow as high pressure builds in. Clear sky for at least parts of the night tomorrow night. I think high clouds will filter in late. That'll prevent temperatures from getting even colder. It's gonna be cold enough. But if it were crystal clear all night tomorrow night, we'd probably be talking about widespread near zero temperatures. As it stands, I think a lot of us will settle around five or six uh, tomorrow night, cold enough. But then a nice warming trend on Saturday with a good deal of afternoon sun. Uh, the afternoon, kind of like today, you'll need to bundle up for sure, but it won't be as harsh as it will be first thing in the morning for sure. Actually, temperatures will rise Saturday night and that'll uh, lead to a balmy Sunday with a mix of sun and clouds. We'll get up into the mid 40s. Outside of our snow chance tonight into tomorrow, not a flake it looks like for the next week. You'll notice the flat lines here on our model depiction over the next seven days. These will be some of the last snowflakes we see for at least a week, perhaps even longer. You know we're expecting a warm February at this point. What about March? Well, today's only February 2nd, of course. Um, but let's just have a little fun and show you what I think might be the right idea. My gut feeling is, given some of the model information, given some of the 
analogs, years past in which we've had warm Januaries and Februaries, a lot of times we don't continue that trend into March necessarily. And the fact that we might might have a, str- a sudden stratospheric warming event late in February. There were rumors of one uh, about a month ago for late January. That didn't materialize. Uh, rumors are out there again that you know in a few weeks we might have to keep an eye on what's going on in the stratosphere. If we have a, a, a stratospheric warming event over the pole, that can dislodge cold air down. Given those things, given what the modeling is showing, I'm not going to be surprised if we do a February-March flip-flop this year where February is a lot more like March and March is a lot more like February. This is today's run of the CFS, Climate Forecast System Model, for the month of March. So we're going to enjoy some pretty nice days in February. We might pay the price in March. Of course, we're going to have much more uh, as far as detail and uh, confidence on the March forecast as we get deeper into the month of February. Happy Groundhog Day, everyone. Thanks for watching Weather for Weather Geeks. Let's do it again on Friday.